Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In this video, I'm going to discuss in Zoom the three different roles you have. So you always have a host and you always have a participant. The host schedules the meeting, pops into the meeting, the people that are joining are participants. But you also have a third role, the co-host. So we're going to take a look at the different permissions for host, co-host, and participants. I'm going to take a look at how to make someone else the host if you're the host, maybe need to leave the meeting, how to reclaim host features if you come back into the meeting. By the way, only one host per meeting. You can have, though, multiple co-hosts in a meeting. So I'll show you how to make a participant elevate them to co-host and look at their permissions. You can have many co-hosts to help you run your meeting. And finally, I'll show you how to make someone that's a co-host put them back to a participant. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to end up in a meeting um, with two people, myself and someone else, and I'm going to go back and forth with these different roles. Thank you for your time. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, so I've started the Zoom meeting. Chris Menard is hosting this meeting. Chris Menard is on this laptop. I know you're saying, why aren't you Chris Menard? In this video, I am Susan. I am right now a participant in this meeting. So here is a tip I recommend whenever you're in a Zoom meeting. I don't care what your role is, host, participant, or co-host. I always pull up the participant panel, which is in the meeting controls at the bottom. Um, I do that no matter what whenever I'm in a Zoom meeting. Also, just so you know this, if you notice the toolbar, again, I'm a participant. I'm going to click on participants just to show you that. So Chris Menard is the host. No one's the co-host yet, but if, it, if someone was the co-host, it would say co-host next to their name. Also, just so you know this, so we've got host, co-host, and participants. Only one host per meeting. I get this question a lot. Can there be multiple hosts? The answer is no only one host. There can be, though, multiple co-hosts. When I say you can have as many co-hosts you want, I know that there's a limit probably somewhere, but it's probably 20 or 30 people. It's up there. I've had four co-hosts before. So just to show you this, hosts have permissions and controls that participants obviously don't have, but also that co-hosts don't have. So real quick, I am going to change Susan to the host. So Chris comes over here. Chris has to run to, Chris has an urgent phone call. So he has the participant panel running. He has to get out of the meeting. I recommend you always have a host for your meeting. So if Chris left the meeting and didn't make someone else the host, the meeting would continue, but everyone's just a participant. So Chris is going to point at Susan's name in the participant panel and select Make Host. Watch what happens in the participant panel right now. Susan is now the host. And by the way, I'm Susan in this video. So watch. look at my meeting controls at the bottom. I can end the meeting. I can record live on YouTube or Facebook. I don't have Facebook turned on. That's only with the paid account, by the way. You can't do that with the free account. I can do breakout rooms. You don't see it down here because I didn't do any for this meeting, but you can do polling if you're the host. You can't do polling as a co-host, and you can't do breakout rooms as a co-host, which I'm going to show you in just one second. But then I've got all these other features, so I can run the meeting here. So now, another tip. If you're the host of a meeting and you leave or you make someone else the host and you want to reclaim host, you can still on the participant panel. You click the three dots and you hit reclaim host. Watch the participant panel here. Chris just reclaimed host because this is Chris's meeting. So now let's take a look at the co-host features. Here's why you would use a co-host. Let's say there's 20 people in the meeting. Chris is running it and he's doing a presentation or he's just trying to manage the meeting as the host. He wants people to help him out maybe with chat, maybe with waiting room and that type of features. 
Chris can have as many co-hosts as he wants. So again, he's going to point at Susan. And now I'm about to become a co-host right now. Make co-host. So let's see what features I can do as the co-host. Number one, let's discuss chat. I'm going to pull up the chat box. Oh, by the way, security pops in here. If you see the security icon in the meeting controls, you're either a host or a co-host. Absolutely. You will not see security as a participant. So if I pull up chat, let me move this around just for a second. A lot of the features that you see in security as host or co-host tie into the participant panel and tie into the chat panel. So if you change one one place, it changes automatically in the other. So here's my example number one. Do you see lock meeting? I can lock the meeting here. Lock meeting appears up in the top left corner. Look up the top left. I'm going to click lock meeting. The meeting is locked. I did that as a co-host. I would do that from the participant panel. I would do that from the participant panel. And there is lock meeting. So if I change it here, turn off lock meeting, it goes away up here. So it doesn't matter whether I lock the meeting from here or lock the meeting from security, because now it says locked up in the top left, no one can get into this meeting. Even with the meeting ID and passcode, you can't get in. So those are tied together. Another feature that's tied together is the chat features. Right now, participants can chat with no one. Here we go. So it says no one here. If I go to security and say, yeah, participants can chat, it changes it here to everyone publicly and directly. So again, those are tied together. Again, that is a co-host feature you can do is limit who can chat. Now, you do have extra options here that you don't have in security for this chat. As an example, I can say host only. So chat is checked, but I made it host only here instead of everyone publicly and directly. What else can we do? I can come to security, I can lock the meeting, I can enable the waiting room and disable the waiting room as a co-host. I can allow people to share their screens or not share screens. Right now, no one can share their screen, meaning no participants can share their screen. If I need a participant to share their screen, I can turn it on right here. I can allow participants to rename themselves and I can also allow participants to unmute themselves. So again, some of these features here are over in the participant panel. Rename and unmute. Allow participants to rename. Allow participants to unmute. And by the way, as a co-host, Chris is presenting. He's the host. I'm Susan, the co-host. I'm hearing a lot of background noise. I may do a mute all. So you can mute all as a co-host. Can't do that as a participant. Now, so what can a co-host not do? Uh, I've already pointed this out one. That live stream to YouTube or Facebook is missing. Closed captionings can't be started. Uh, two really important ones here. I think I've already mentioned these though, but the breakout rooms cannot be done as a co-host and polling can't be done as a co-host. I don't, yeah, polling cannot be done as a co-host. Anyway, I hope you appreciate this video. Feel free to leave any comments about the different roles, host and participants you always have when you have a meeting, but the co-host is the one where you make people co-host. Also, my other tip is if you got to leave the meeting and you're hosting it, put someone else you know that knows how to run Zoom, make them the host. That is it. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your time. Everyone have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.